Push That Rock with Simpson Matt. This lesson looks at a balls and urn problem. Consider a experiment where we pour out balls from an urn containing a set of balls, white and black, and we count the number of black balls. This type of problem, of course, is an abstraction problem for sampling from a population. In this particular um, problem, we have five white balls and three black balls in a population of eight balls. So these are characteristics like uh, maybe male and female, Republican and Democrat, um, that sort of thing. And this is the population here. And we're going to pour out four of these balls without replacement. That means we're pouring them all out at once. Four are going to drop out randomly. Or you can think of it as we're going to pull one out, look at it, set it down, and then pull, uh, pull a second one out, look at it, set it down. And we're not putting them back in as we pull them out. So the size of the population keeps going down as, as we pull. Okay, so the experiment is pour out four or select four without replacement and count the number of black balls. So the outcome that we're looking for is the number of black balls. We're counting them. Well, we could get zero black balls, right? We could pour out four of these four white balls right here and there'd be zero black balls. We could pour out this black ball along with three whites. So that'd be one black ball. We could pour out two blacks and two whites. We could even pour out three blacks and one white, but we cannot pour out four blacks because there aren't four blacks in the population. So the sample space is zero, one, two, three. When you make a sample space, you need to remember you're recording what the random variable values could be. The random variable is how many black balls did we count? Because that's the observation that we're making from this experiment. It says count the black balls. So that's the observations. The sample, so the random variable is the number of black balls, and the sample space is the possible values of that random variable. This particular sample space is not symmetric because these, like, these outcomes do not have equally likely chances. It is probably not the same chance to get no white balls as it is to get three. In fact, I think getting three is probably not that likely. We're going to ask, what is the chance for one black ball? So same experiment, pouring four, counting blacks from this population of eight, five white, three black. What is the chance for one black ball? Well, what are the likely, uh, equally likely outcomes? How many ways can we get a black ball? We could get white and white and white and then black, thinking about it as taking out one at a time. We could get white and white and then black and then white. We could get white and black and white and white. We could get black and white and white and white. So the, in other words, there's four slots and the one black ball could fill any one of the four slots. So there's four different ways that could happen. That's a counting problem. So let's do some computations. Let's figure out the situation where we draw three whites in a row and then a black. Well, there's eight balls and we have five chances for white. So on the first draw, there's five and eight chances for a white ball. And we're going to get a white, so we're going to multiply. On the second draw, that and kind of indicates that we're going to multiply. But there's only seven balls left because we took one out, and there's only four white ones left because we took out a white. Then on the third one, we've taken out two whites from the five whites. So two from five is three. There's only three white balls left. We've taken two from eight, so there's only six total balls left. So there's a one-half chance, three and six chance, that we get a white on that third draw. Then lastly, there's five balls left, but there's still three blacks, so there's a three and five chance. Now, that means our numerator is five times four times three times three. Our denominator is eight times seven times six times five. We can do some reducing, and it becomes out to be 328 is the chance. Or another way that we could get one black is if we went white and white and black and white. Now, notice what happens when you think this out. There's five and eight chances on the first draw to get a white. There's four, because there's four whites left after you take one out, and seven balls left after you take one out. So four and seven chances to get a white. But wait, now we're it's down to six. We're drawing the one of the three blacks. There's the three and six chance. 
And after we draw out the black, we want to get a white again. Well, we've only taken out two, so there's still three left after five. Notice our, our numerator is exactly the same numerator. It's exactly the same numerator. Denominator is exactly the same. So the, if we cancel the five with a five, and we, four goes down to eight twice, and three goes down to six twice, we have seven times four is 28 is our denominator, and our numerator is three, the same as before. Now remember, there's four different equally likely ways to pour out this one black ball, and each of them is going to have a 3 and 28th chance. So we're going to add all those up because it's this or that or the next one or the next one. So or means add. We add these up. Or that's the same since they're all the same is multiplying by 4. 4 goes into 28 seven times. And so the chance for one black ball is 3 sevenths. Yay, we solved this problem. In other words, when you solve this type of problem, in this particular case, we need three out of the five white balls and one out of the three black balls in an experiment with four out of eight equally likely outcomes. Now, if you're hearing the language, four out of five implies a combination of five choose three. One out of three implies a combination of three choose one. And four out of eight implies a combination of eight choose four. Success starts here at Temple College.